Hey everybody, okay, I'm out here kind of late in the day. It's cold and it's windy and I'm tucked away here, I hope, out of the wind. But uh, if there's too much wind noise, I'll just scrap the video, I guess. Now I'm gonna respond to three comments to previous videos. So first one is a comment on a recent podcast uh, with Kevin Wilmot, where we talked about the cultural struggle around AI. And Ahsoka writes, AI can be a very dangerous weapon depending on those who control it. And if evil humans control it, it all evolve into something evil. But there is also a possibility that benevolent humans shape AI into a benevolent direction. Okay. There's a dangerous idea there that says that, you know, the way that this is going to go wrong is because evil people set it to evil purposes. That's not what's happening here. Now, evil, real evil, you know, you can't bargain with, you just have to defeat it. You know, because to, to make accommodations with evil itself is evil, which is why we've got this total inflation of the word evil. Evil now has just come to mean somebody who holds a belief that you disagree with. Evil should be a synonym for malevolent. An evil person doesn't, you know, doesn't create harm by accident. They create harm deliberately. You know, they don't hurt other people uh, as a matter, you know, as, as sort of collateral damage from getting the things done that they want to get done. An evil person sets out to do harm. Such people are not creating large language models. Uh, the people creating large language models are basically normal people. I mean, they're more toward the shape rotator end than the word cell end of the spectrum, but you know, they're normal people with normal goals like, I want to make money, I want people to think well of me, you know, I want to be in good health, I want to look good. You know, normal human concerns, and I think probably even a higher than normal level of altruism. Um, you know, in Silicon Valley you get effective altruism rather than charity, but it's, it's the same idea. It's I'm doing well, but not everybody's doing well, and I'm not satisfied. I would like everybody to be doing better than they are. It's a very prevalent, very prevalent mindset among the sorts of people working on AI. So the danger from AI is not that evil people will set it to evil purposes. The danger from AI is that well-intentioned people won't think of everything in advance, and there will be unexpected consequences, and the AI simply will have interests and designs and desires that are just incompatible with our own well-being, not because they hate us, because they just have a different vision for the world and they're going to utilize the world's resources as they see fit. And if that doesn't leave enough for us to live the way we're, you know, we've become accustomed to living, well, bummer. <laughs> next, next piece of feedback. This is from the Great Bloviator. Great, great handle, by the way. The Great Bloviator writes, regarding AI and art. I think fine art is in less danger than commercial art, mainly because fine art involves a lot of physicality, the artist's touch. I think it will be a while before an AI robot will be producing things like a Rauschenberg combine painting or a Van Gogh masterpiece, although all the pure AI art I've seen has the AI stink, as your guest put it. Yes, <laughs> Kevin Wilmot uh, coined that phrase, the AI stink, and I think we all we all know the AI stink when we see it. At least we think we do. Or at least, you know, we catch a whiff of the AI stink often enough to think that we catch it from all exposure to AI, which we probably don't. Uh, on the topic of fine art, though, there's a complication with fine art. Yeah, it's physical, uh, but often it's bullshit. And it wouldn't, be, wouldn't have been considered art in a previous century, wouldn't have been considered art you know, even 20, 30 years ago, but now there is a great demand for a lot of so-called fine art because it is used for money laundering. So you take a piece of shit, you call it fine art, and you say it's worth $20 million. And then you sell it to somebody and they give you $20 million, you know, uh, that's clean money. You know, it's still a turd, but because, you know, if you agree to get people to spend a lot of money on it, then you can move huge sums of money around in tiny little packages. Uh, and it's legal. Finally, Dan, stalwart commenter Dan, comments, Thanks for the video, KMO, and Kevin. Good listen. Got a lot out of it. First, you have said in other media that you have made that AI will usher in an even greater transfer of wealth. Much of my awareness over the last three years has been focused on the COVID pandemic, and one of the features of the pandemic has been a transfer of wealth upward. I'm interested in the commonalities between AI and COVID. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the transfer of wealth that will be made possible by AI. 
You also discussed Google Ads. Google makes money on ads, though they are not. They are, though they are better than TV or newspapers. They aren't that good at it. It has been a very long time since the company has put an ad in front of me that gets my attention more than the skip button. When it comes to ads in search, I have just trained myself to completely ignore them. I just I know that they're not at the top of the page because they're the most relevant, but because somebody paid for them to be there. So I scroll down to the ads that are not marked as paid advertisement, or the links that are not marked as paid advertisement. With ads, though, the company makes money selling ads. There aren't enough, I mean, particularly if you're somebody like me who doesn't really have a lot of a, you know disposable income, there aren't that many ads that really should be put in front of me because there's very little that I'm going to buy because I don't have much money. Um, and the stuff that you're going to put in front of me it better be cheap, you know. And yet Google, knowing my, you know, my financial situation perfectly well uh, via YouTube, puts advertisements for new cars in front of me every single day. I'm never going to buy a new car. I don't, I don't care if I, you know, win the gazillion lottery and I'm a billionaire. I'm never going to buy a new car. It's just never going to happen. And, and Google must have some inkling of this, but they get paid to show me ads for things that I can't afford to buy and never would buy. I see ads for all manner of drugs, for diseases that I'm pretty sure I don't have, although sometimes it scares me. Like, I don't know exactly what ulcerative colitis is, but somebody at Google has decided, somebody, an algorithm at Google has decided that I need to see ads for it multiple times a day. Uh, I'm hoping this isn't a case, like there's an ad where a, a situation where a woman started getting ads for, um, you know, products that get pitched to pregnant women before she knew she was pregnant, but, the, but Google knew she was pregnant <laughs> and was serving her appropriate ads before she knew. I hope this isn't a case of Google knows that I have ulcerative colitis or whatever, and they're already pitching me the uh, the ads for the drugs, even though, you know, I don't have a doctor, I don't have access to health insurance, and I just turned 55, so I've got 10 years, 10 years to go until I get the socialized medicine that we give to old people. Although I'm told I already qualify for the senior discount at the movie theater, though I don't go to movies very often, and I'd be embarrassed to ask. <laughs> oh, what was the final part of Dan's question? Oh, I think I skipped to the end uh, and answered the last question first. Is this going to transfer wealth up? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, you know, companies like OpenAI, yeah, it started as a nonprofit, but it was a nonprofit started by billionaires and, you know, the henchmen of billionaires. Um, this is going to make rich people richer. Like, you know, the tech revolution, though, like the rise of things like Google and Facebook and Amazon and whatnot, people who hadn't been part of the power structure before will get thrust up into it, you know, because they, you know, people who are nobodies are going to find novel applications for this stuff. They're going to find some traction and they're going to make a whole lot of money. And, you know, so there'll be another generation of, uh, you know, Larry Page and Sergey Brin and Jeff Bezos and that crowd, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a fresh crop of newly minted billionaires from AI, but that doesn't mean that most people are going to figure out a way to leverage it to their advantage. Now, in the long term, I'm, I'm not such a curmudgeon and I'm not, you know, such a grump that I'm going to say this will never help anybody. You know, it, if you look at history, if you look at the, uh, the Industrial Revolution, particularly in the UK, yeah, it was brutal. It was brutal at first. And uh, people, you know, the first couple of generations of people might have been better off working, you know, in those agricultural positions before the Enclosure Acts forced them all into the cities and made them take the god-awful jobs in early factories. But who's arguing that we're all, you know, much worse off now as a result of the Industrial Revolution? I mean, eventually, the benefits of the technology do trickle down to everybody. And I think it's going to happen a whole lot faster with AI than it did with, say, electricity or plumbing or, you know, the, uh, the interstate highway system. You know, I, I think there will be benefits. And there, there already are benefits. But I think that um, it's going to be the sort of class of benefits where this will be one of the things that is, you know, foundational to your, your quality of life and you never even think about it, like running hot water, like flush toilets. You know, when the toilet stops working, you come to appreciate very quickly the, the joy, just the, the miracle of indoor plumbing with toilets that work and, you know, 
rooms where you piss and shit every single day and they don't stink. Amazing. Great stuff. Uh, there will be an AI equivalent of the toilet. <laughs> I don't know what it will be. If I did, I would be one of those newly minted billionaires. Uh, but no, no, I'm just an observer and a commenter. So keep commenting on my comments and I'll comment on your comments and we will have a commenty time. Talk to you soon.